Encore is one of the most embarrassing failures in gaming history. This game was first announced. I'm pretty sure everybody knew what kind of game it was going to be. I mean, it released with a cinematic trailer that didn't really tell you much, but I'm sure that everybody knew that it was going to be a live service game. And I think the time it was announced, people were already getting tired of the live service, live service experience. So when the cinematic trailer came out, I'm pretty sure nobody had any excitement for the game. And then when actual gameplay was shown, and it was confirmed to be a hero shooter, I'm pretty sure that was the ultimate <laughs> nail in the coffin. Because like at this point, the market is very saturated when it comes to hero shooters and live service games. Um, if you want to play a live service game or hero shooter, you have many, many other options that are just better <laughs> in general. And yeah, I don't know why Sony thought it was a good idea to charge $40 for this game. Um, pretty much every hero shooter on the market right now is either very cheap or free. So charging $40 is just a crazy idea that <laughs> it was just another another nail in the coffin. So yeah, um, let's see what else. Where, where was the marketing for the game? I mean, like I said, there was that cinematic trailer and then there was a trailer that had like I don't know, maybe like five minutes of cutscenes and then it showed actual gameplay. Other than that, I didn't really see any other marketing. Uh, I don't know if there was like, you know, short commercials or anything. The only other marketing was probably just from people talking about how the game was going to flop on uh, social media outlets. But on Sony's part, I didn't really see them talking about the game. Like, how were they expecting any success, or at least any excitement, when the game's not even being marketed? And, you know, you're not promoting the characters, you're not promoting any lore, you're not doing any world building before your actual game comes out to get people excited about how this game can be different from any other games that are, are, that are in the same genre. Um... Yeah, and I know, like I said, the market is saturated with live service games. And I am somebody who has, you know, played more single player games just throughout my life. <laughs> it's growing up because uh, for a long time, I, I didn't even have, you know, Wi-Fi to play online. Um, you know, but I do play, you know, some online games here and there. Um, and just because a game's online and, or just like live service, it doesn't mean it's bad. There are great live service games out there. Recently, um, Helldivers 2 is probably the best example. The people who created that game did a great job marketing it and just letting players know about the world and just the combat. It just looked fun, right? So, um... Yeah, it's like, like I said, I don't think people are tired of live service games. I think they're just tired of the same formulaic live service games that have no innovation and no create, no creativity. And I think if you are going to put a game out like Concord, you need to introduce something that's going to change up the genre or at least make the world or the characters within the game interesting so that it gives your game a chance to you know cultivate an audience um <laughs> and with the marketing that they did, did that they did it only <laughs> it only attracted <laughs> around you know around 700 players at its peak for uh for pc um <laughs> but yeah i I just hope that this is a wake-up call for the gaming industry. I hope that, you know, I don't think they'll 
you know, developers will stop making these kinds of games. Um, but hopefully they will be smarter in their tactics and we won't see another failure like Concord. Because uh, like I said, there's no problem with live service games, but if you're making this kind of game, you really have to do something that changes the formula. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I said, you just have innovation and I, I think innovation is a big thing nowadays. Um, you know, even just in any kind of media, because um, everything is so saturated nowadays and if you want your product to, to succeed you you don't have to do a major change but just something that can grab at least a, a decent percentage of an audience within a genre um you know even for single player games we're seeing a lot of sequels and remakes and remasters and i think the reason we see those kinds of games coming out in the single player um, genre of video games is because it's just safe to do. You know, people are familiar with it and people are more likely to play something or watch something or read something that they are already familiar with. You know, if they're familiar with the world, the characters, the themes, then and they they enjoyed it then they'll be more likely to spend time with that but yeah so like i said even innovation would be nice to have in single player games you know new ips new stories um new mechanics even um that that would be great um but i understand it's hard to do and you need creative minds to to make those changes and i think that brings me to talking about you know, how I feel like releasing Concord around the same time as Black Myth Wukong also damaged the sales and reputation of the game because you have this single player game that has been talked about for years and that has been marketed heavily and that has, you know, a story that, you know, I guess people are familiar with it, but you know, because, you know, Journey of the West, right? People are familiar with it, but they might might not know a lot about, you know, Journey to the West. Then that will intrigue players to, you know, buy Black Myth Wukong so they can experience, um, you know, that world and those characters. And, you know, if, you know, if you have the choice of buying Concord, which is a, you know, which is a new, I guess, it's a new IP, but it's a, it's a basically, I guess, just a, a reskin of what a lot of g games are already out. Whereas Black Myth Wukong, you can, of course, pick out mechanics and stuff from the game that are similar to other games, but it's a new IP. It's telling a story that people are familiar with also intrigues people and um yeah so just releasing concord at the, at the same time as black myth wukong i feel like really was not, was not a great idea um and i think the biggest biggest thing that really sucks about the failure of concord is just that it was a huge waste of money that could have been poured into other games but most importantly it was a big waste of time and developer skills um you know time is just you know you can always make more money right but time is just something you can't get back and i do feel bad for the people who did work hard on this game but i'm sure it was not an easy game to make and you know working day in and day out you know and pouring your heart and soul into this game just for it to fail in two weeks, it must, you know, really hurt. Because I'm pretty sure we've all had an experience where we've worked on something hard that we wished, you know, received the success we believe 
we should have had but then for it to fail you know it i feel like that really takes a huge mental toll on a person like i said it's a big waste of of money but it's also it's a waste of people's skills and you know who who knows what those talented people could have done you know in a in a different game and yeah it, it just sucks to to see that people you know worked on this game and then for it to fail and then thinking about you know how that impacts you know actual people's lives because we've seen how if a you know studio has a poor performing game they'll let go of their you know staff and you know those are real people's lives and you know i, I we just see it a lot in this industry where people just get let go from their jobs and who knows if those people bounce back um but yeah i think that's the saddest part about this whole situation this whole situation but yeah i'm just hoping that we don't see another failure like this and that um studios can just learn from this mistake and that um games just can move forward and you know we can get back to playing games that we actually enjoy